Apologies if I sound a little weird, I'm getting over a cold. Um, okay, so uh, I'll be talking about computable general, general equilibrium models in JUMP. Um, it's a little weird because I'm a mathematician talking about economics at a CS conference, so I'm going to do my best here. Um, I work for the Wisconsin National Data Consortium, WinDC, and what we do is we create open source models, um, multi-sectoral multi economic models from government, governmental data. Um, most of these models are in GAMS. Um, they're typically large complementarity problems, like mixed complementarity problems, um, so they can be hard to solve. The people behind this, uh, Tom Rutherford, he's the director. Um, he's kind of a big name in this field. Uh, if you've ever used MPSGE, he's the dude that created it. Uh, myself, I've been with WinDC for about a year, uh, and Swan, our postdoc, she's been here for about six months. Um, so we're a small team trying to do these things. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, our current workflow, we take raw government data, process it in Python, um, and currently we throw that into GAMS to create these models. Um, of course, I would like to skip, uh, definitely take out GAMS, but skip the Python part as well, because that's kind of the power of Julia, is that you can do that. Um, and I've had actually a lot of success doing this, which is very nice. Um, I want to talk a little bit about GAMS, because kind of my whole thing is replacing GAMS. Um, it's old, developed in 1976, has a huge variety of solvers. I think it supports far more than Jump. Um, and it is much fast, it's incredibly fast um, at creating like equations and like um, setting up the constraints. It's widely used for economics, energy sector, governmental uses, um, very, very popular software. It is closed source and it costs quite a bit, but for these kinds of things, cost usually isn't the limiting factor. Um, it's used because it's fast and it's old. It's kind of one of those self-fulfilling prophecies. People use it because people use it. Uh, the syntax is exceptionally terse. Um, it's one of the reasons we actually like Julia because the syntax is similar, like for creating constraints and stuff. Python is not. Um, and there's also the sets domain checking and just embedded documentation. Like here's an example. So this is creating a set in GAMS and the description is included directly in the definition of the set. So when you report this, like GAMS will generate an automatic report, it will tell you what it is. Same when you create a parameter. And the power of GAMS is that the set X and the set Y, mathematically they're exactly the same, they're ABC. This will fail because it doesn't know that X and Y are related. It will tell you there's a domain error. Um, and this is nice because it sort of it keeps you honest, um, which is important for models that are bigger than three things. Um, so what I've done um, to sort of ease the transition for people that use GAMS quite a bit, I've created a package called GAMS structure. It implements uh, GAMS like sets and parameters, mainly on the data side of things. Um, and you can also save and load these things quickly. So um, we typically have, you know, 100 parameters or something like that, um, and dump those into CSVs and load them in very quickly. Uh, I've also created this thing called gdx.jl. Um, this might be incredibly useful for people that use GAMS because this will load a GDX file into Julia directly. Um, and this isn't something clever. This is using a package from Python called GAMS transfer. Um, if you use GAMS a lot, I recommend looking into that. It was actually created by the person that used to have my job at WinDC, and then GAMS hired him. So I guess it's a win for me, because I got a job. Um, I think that, is that big enough to see? I think so. On the left here, we have GAMS code. On the right, we have Julia code. But as you can see, the syntax for creating a set here, and what I have as a set here, is very similar. As you can see, the description in the description, and it's sort of like this universe called GU. 
Um, so it keeps everything and it can domain check. Um, and it's very nice. This is just a basic transportation model. I'm not doing anything fancy here. Um, and then I'll talk about this later. When I get down into the jump part, um, here I can see descriptions again on variables and variables. Jump doesn't have support for that, at least I don't think so. Um, I'll talk about that more later. The WinDC national model, this is sort of um, one of our big, like our start, actually it's not a big model at all, it's one of our smaller models. Um, seven sets, 22 parameters, 293 variables, so it's very small. Nine of those variables are distinct. Um, variables slash constraints because it's a complementarity problem, so it kind of has to be the same. Um, and this tracks 73 industries and commodities at the national level, um, and it solves mostly fine in Jump. Um, there's one year, 1997, for some reason, um, it just gives the trivial solution when it shouldn't, um, all zeros, uh, debugging that one. But all the other ones give the same solution as GAMS, um, which is spectacular. Uh, a slightly bigger model is the state level model, and this tracks flows from state to state. So it will take like dairy in Wisconsin, and where does it go? Like, does it go to um, agriculture in Minnesota? Does it go to like something else? Um, so this work, um, so obviously this model is going to be a lot bigger. It's going to be at least 50 times bigger but probably far more because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those categories that are from like the national data set and disaggregate them. So like um, by default, it's just agriculture. Wisconsin, we're kind of, Wisconsin and USDA kind of interested in dairy and wheat and soy and so break those up. Uh, that's where the majority of our work is. If it were just modeling, we'd be done and it would be great, um, but it's not. Uh, and this is the part that might be presumptuous on my part uh, because I'm, you know, naive. Um, so this is something that I, I miss uh, from GAMS. There's not a lot, but there's one thing. Um, if you have, um, basically you can do um, parametric constraints. So this comes up a lot in um, elasticities for economics, right? Like you'll have one elasticity if a parameter is zero, another one if it's one, and something else otherwise. In GAMS, they have this dollar sign operator, which is um, not intuitive. I would like it to be slightly more intuitive. Um, I'm aware that there are, like, and this would implement this piecewise function, which is quite nice. Uh, I'm aware that there are packages that do this in Julia. It's not in Jump at the moment. Um, at least if it is, I would, that would be great. Um, this is something I'd very much like, um, and I might try to work on it. I know it's a relatively big ask. And there are packages, but the problem is, is I'm solving complementarity problems. So I'm going through the complementarity package, which then becomes a whole issue. Uh, and the other things that Jump would be missing from GAMS, just descriptions on variables. This one might be actually easier because uh, it'd be just like the access arrays container um, and automatic solutions reporting. Like when you solve a model in GAMS, you get, it's very easy to get a whole um, just description of your model. And then those uh, descriptions are on there so you can send them to people and they're like, oh, that's what Y is. It's like some price of commodity. Um, all right, and I think I finished exactly on time, so thank you for listening. <laughs>